Hello and welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat. Um, what we've got on the desk here is an Atari 1200XL motherboard that's been sent in from the United States. And the reason it was sent in is because the owner uh, had installed um, an Ultimate One Megabyte board here. This is one of the new run of um, satin black PCBs. So the board's brand new. Now the owner had posted on the Atari H forum asking for some help with this machine uh, because he couldn't get it to boot after he installed the, the Ultimate. And I think he reverted it back to stock condition, after, or not entirely stock condition because he's had to do the uh, single OS ROM modification uh, on the board. So hopefully that is free of problems. It looks like it should be. But anyway, after he modified the board, he took the ultimate one megabyte out, still couldn't get it to boot. So big problems. He had previously asked me for a replacement um, OS ROM cable, uh, which I just made up when he told me that he had pretty much given up on trying to fix it himself. And uh, he wanted to send it all the way over to the UK to me. Uh, I suggested that there might be people in America who could have helped him and he could have saved some money on shipping and stuff. But nevertheless, he was insistent he wanted to send it here. So the first thing I did here was a quick uh, visual inspection of the board. Now, the first thing I noticed here uh, is this jumper wire here. I had kind of looked on the, um, the photographs on the forum that the owner had posted. He reckoned he checked all the connections, so I didn't want to just chime in with, uh, I think it's a short sort of thing. Right, so the first issue, this wire here, so I've tr the first thing I do is I uh, continuity tested all the jumpers back to the signals uh, where they should be on the CPU. But he's put the wires in the right place anyway. So the one I was worried about was this one here. Just because that, the wire that it's actually connected to is at the top of this trace here, this green trace that just runs up next to the MMU. Now that trace isn't connected to the trace that goes to pin 14 of the MMU. It, um, it, that one goes around the top and that one goes there, but this solder blob here seems to be bridging the two. Now of course there's solder mask on the trace, but anyway. Uh, so pin 14 of the MMU goes to the top of this resistor, which is R89 here. So that's where that trace leads there. Now this trace here goes to pin 36 of the CPU. So pin 36 of the CPU is the HALT signal. So this is the HALT wire that's going to go to the ultimate one megabyte. Um, so we've got continuity between there and there, so that's fine. But we've also got a short between HALT and pin 14 of the MMU. So that my contention is here that that blob of solder has actually bridged those two traces and that shouldn't be the case. So I reckon that that was why the machine wasn't even working when he took ultimate one megabyte out. Um, but anyway, I had a look at the schematic and on the 1200XL MMU, of course, we've got no parallel bus. So the math pack disable signal, which is normally on pin 14 here of the MMU, isn't used. It's actually pulled up to 5 volts via a resistor. So what I thought initially uh, is no wonder the machine doesn't work because the halt signal is essentially tied to 5 volts. But I think the halt signal is pulled up anyway, thinking about it. And of course the halt signal is what uh, Antic uses to pause the CPU, take the CPU off the bus when it's doing uh, refresh cycles for the display. So I didn't want to touch the board before I got the camera running anyway, because in just in case it gets interesting, I think there might be a secondary fault. But anyway, let's have a look. I mean, the machine won't boot anyway. It hasn't got an MMU in it, but I want to show you uh, what happens when I turn the power on. So let's have a look with the scope and see if the whole signal actually works. Right, so I've got the probe on pin 14 of the MMU, which is math pack disabled, so that should be permanently high. Alright, so that, that should be permanently high, but it's not. 
So if we look at pin 36 of the CPU, we can see as well that by the looks of it, we have the whole signal doing its job. All this short's essentially done is put two 5 volt pull ups on the whole signal instead of one, which probably doesn't make any functional difference, but that short shouldn't be there. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get rid of that short and see where we are after that. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of uh, desoldering braid here. I'm just going to mop that excess solder off the board. The wire could probably come off anyway. Now what I was saying to the, uh, the machine's owner is that when I put these jumpers on like this, what I usually do, well in fact what I always do, is I clear the solder from the via on the board and push the wire through the hole. I can probably thread it through like that. There you are. I've just melted what was in the hole and pushed the wire through in that case. I don't normally do it that way. I like to actually clear the hole and then thread the wire through and solder from the back side. But for the purposes of testing, this will do fine. In fact, I'll do that on all these wires because I don't like the look of them particularly. So let's see if the short's gone between math pack disable and halt. All right, so there and there. And the short is gone, no beep. So we've now disconnected the short between math pack disable, which is five volt pull up, and the halt signal. So let's have a look on the scope. So we should see MPD, permanently high, which we do, and we should see halt pretty much as it was before. So it looks like the behavior of the halt signal has not changed in any way, shape or form. So it doesn't look like this was actually the cause of the machine not booting as far as I can see. So we have to look a little bit further. So I think we might as well do now is uh, hook up the ultimate one megabyte and see if we can get the machine to boot. Okay. And we'll just roughly position this thing, just so it's not going to short out anywhere. Of course, we'll route these wires properly later on. Okay, so I want the video cable. All right, monitor on. So let's see if we get anything at all. And the wrong input It'll probably help if we selected the correct one. And we get a booting machine. Aha! Right, well that's interesting. That was unexpected. Let's have another look at this. This is this is a uh, very interesting piece. So by the looks of it, it was that short after all, even though the behavior of Holt did not look to be any different at all. Um that's weird. Right, I'm gonna Right, I'm now I've shorted that same signal out with the screwdriver, so it's now exactly as it was, and we get a green screen. So that was the fault. So I'm I'm showing my ignorance here. Um, I thought that two five volt pull up resistors uh, wouldn't have made any difference, unless the fact that with the short in place, the CPU is now pulling down the math pack disable pin on the MMU every time it asserted halt was that, was that causing a problem? Because halt appeared to work according to the scope output. It didn't look any different at all, regardless of whether the short was there or not. So that's weird. But uh, anyway, uh, his machine's fixed now. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. So I don't know whether his uh, OS ROM cable was faulty as well. Obviously, I've made him a new one, and I'm gonna I'll put the board in for him and mount it and everything. Um, but yes, that short was killing the entire system. It was crashing the operating system just as I'd speculated. But I'm not sure if it's for the, exactly for the reason that I thought it was. So yeah, if you've got any ideas about what was going on there, please leave them in the comments below because basically, as far as I could tell, Holt was functioning properly, uh, regardless of whether that short was in place or not. And I'm assuming, I haven't checked the schematic that Holt um, is pulled up anyway. All right, so here is uh, the MMU 
which on the 600 XL is CO60609. Um, I'm sure I'm not even sure this schematic's correct. I tried to look around for a pinout um, of the 1200 XL MMU online, but anyway, this is the Jersey Cibola schematic. Pin 14 MPD, but that's just tied to 5 volts by R87, which is a 3K resistor, so it's a pull up resistor. So we now go to the CPU and we look up uh, Holt, which is on pin 35, and that goes to there. So that will go to the uh, Antic chip, uh, which is up there, it's on pin 9. So they're linked together. And that goes over there. So is that um, or maybe maybe Holt isn't pulled up to five volts after all? Yeah, so it's not entirely clear to me that uh, Holt has got a five volt pull up on it at all. So maybe I was right the first time and wrong the second time. In as much as that, what was effectively a five volt pull up uh, on the Holt signal um, tied to a a don't care signal on the MMU is probably what was stopping the machine from working. All right, so there you go. Just a quick little video about that one. I, the reason I started the camera rolling is because I thought it might be an even more interesting fix if there was a secondary problem somewhere, but nope. Nope, it was just that problem. And uh, but I think it was quite interesting in itself. I think I've learned something there anyway. So there you go anyway, and I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll, uh, I guess I'll be back with a uh, a little bit of a longer video next time and uh, I've got tons of stuff to get through here and of course I'm uh, going to be clearing the uh, house, uh, the parental home, which is a job in itself. Well, I'm not doing it personally, I'm, uh, I'm having to pay to get it done and it is very, very expensive to clear a house that looks like something from Hoarders Buried Alive, but uh, that's another story in itself. So, uh, yep, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hope you found that interesting and I will see you in the next video. So goodbye for now.